So, okay. So, the next uh, talk, as we all know, by now this is a controversial topic. Hopefully, everyone's woken up. You know that uh, there's a lot to talk about in the legal parts as well. So, we have uh, uh, Lejamol Joseph, who is the Chief Transplant Coordinator for JSK in Karnataka. And we know that Karnataka actually has been a bit of a rock star this year when it comes to organ donation. We actually are leading the country in organ donation right, uh, this year. And a big hand to ourselves from Karnataka, right? So, uh, Lija is going to talk about the process of, of flow of organ donation in Karnataka, what's actually worked here. And more importantly, one of her briefs is also to talk to surgeons, to tell them what a coordinator expects from them. Because you'll be getting calls in the middle of the night, you'll get angry at coordinators, you'll shout at them, please don't do that. And, and, <laughs> and also, she, she'll, uh, she'll explain to you what exactly is the information that you should be asking for, for the coordinators, what information should you be communicating to the coordinators so that we can streamline this process of, uh, of organ allocation. Thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity for me to come here and then talk about the process flow of organ donation in Karnataka. So just to um, um, come to the point that, you know, what we expect from uh, the retrieval uh, team, that I'll quickly go through the, you know, what all the steps which is involved because you know, these are the tremendous work that you know, we do back and forth, back and forth. And uh, identification is the first step where in which it is, uh, it is the start of identification of a potential donor is the start of uh, everything. But the rest of the work is like you know, it is a back and forth, back and forth. You can't uh, uh, never expect that you know, which comes first. So first is donor identification. Second is um, uh, identific uh, the impaneled doctors should perform the first set of brain death certification and declare that the patient is brain dead. Then comes the uh, break the news to the family. And uh, once we have that, you know, just inform Jeeva Sartagade in this number, uh, 9548006768. That time, when whoever is the coordinator who is informing the um, Jeeva Sartakade, they should uh, provide us with the name of the uh, potential donor, age, sex, blood group, uh, inform that whether it is an MLC or a non-MLC, and reason for the brain death, and just in case, if you have done the grief counseling and uh, the family needed the body back at a particular timing, just inform us. This is very, very important, the cremation timing, uh, because we plan everything uh, according to the wish and will of the family members, the donor family members. We actually work backward. If they say that you know, we need to give the body back at 10 a.m. tomorrow, so our target is like you know 9 a.m. When we inform the uh, retrieval uh, team, we tell that you know it is 9 a.m. that we have to give the body back to the family members. So we have one hour in our hand just to make sure that you know there is no hiccups happening. Because in transplant, we, we can't never we can't predict what is uh, what unexpected things that you know, we are going to see at any point of time. So then uh, OT timing schedule based on uh, the family members' concern. Declaration of brain death happens, and uh, Dr. Sonalastana has already uh, told us like you know who all have to be uh, uh, doing the brain death certification. And uh, this is just to make sure that you know, familiarize all of you with the, the forms that which we are using for brain death certification. It's this form number 10. It looks like this. And uh, these are the, um, uh, these two. RMP uh, nominated form of this, this one and this one. These are the two empaneled uh, doctors. This, you will be getting it when you are applying for the license. So these are the hospital, uh, uh, the other two are this, this portion, the hospital uh, in charge, and this is the treating doctor. These are the two administrative uh, signatures, and these two are the uh, two empaneled uh, signatures, which is necessary in the form number 10. And then comes the grief counseling and uh, written consent, we have to take it in Karnataka. Jeeva Sartaka, the coordinators are going to the, the donor hospital and they are the one who are supposed to take the written consent. And this is the form which we are using in, uh, you know, to get the written consent from the uh, family members. And we need to 
specify that what all organs they are, um, you know, the family members are uh, agreeing for organ donation. As a retrieval surgeon, what you have to check is like, you have to check for this form number 10, form number 8, and if it is a MLC case, check for the police intimation. Police intimation, the uh, template that I will show you next. So this is the police intimation template that we use. This is nothing which um, actually says that uh, we have done the declaration, first declaration, second declaration, and the family has come forward for organ donation. And these are the specific organs they have consented for organ donation. So check before you get into the OT and before you touch the um, donor, uh, please see that whether the family has agreed for the uh, particular organ that you are going to retrieve. So it, it should be specifically written here. See, here uh, you can't see actually heart or heart walls, lungs, kidneys, pancreas, liver, eyes and corneas. So specify that uh, which our organs are um, consented. You need to check that. That is one of the mandatory things uh, we have to check. The procedure after brain dead uh, declaration, JSK coordinators, what all the things uh, we are doing, written consent from the family, intimation to the police station, and contact the organ advisory committee for the viability of the organs. So this is very, very important because the people who are working in Jeevasathaka, they, they are not doctors. We are all social workers. So we take the basic information from the donor hospital and we discuss with the organ advisors. And then we see that whether these organs are viable. When the organ advisors say that it is a viable organ, then we start allocating, at least the temporary allocation of organs will happen. Then according to the advisories, uh, uh, advice that you know, we start uh, activating recipients for various organs, then we will confirm the OT timing for organ retrieval. And remember this here, <coughs> this organ retrieval, it's not only one team. See, if it is every organ belongs to the uh, donor hospital, not a problem. But what if, if uh, you are sharing the organ with other people? especially with other uh, state, then there is controversies because controversies of interest is also there because the domestic person wanted at a particular time, they wanted to you know cross clamp and other things. But we need to think about optimal utilization of organs and that is where that we have to work it out. So um, depending on everybody's, I mean, whoever is the retrieval team which is coming for that particular organ donation, uh, we have to confirm an OT timing after discussing with all of them. That part the JSK coordinators will do, but uh, every surgeons have to stick to the OT timing. Then we will be informing the retrieval teams uh, about the OT timing. Then uh, we'll see that you know, the package of organs and everything is done very correctly. And if there is any um, a lack of you know uh, sterilize or you know the HTK solution or whatever the solution that you are going to use it for that particular retrieval, if it is not there, adequate amount or quantity is not available, you have to inform the coordinators well in advance so that they can help you out in you know getting all those uh, facilities. Then allocation of organs according to the priority we'll be allocating, and the lastly that you know, we'll be doing the PM. Uh, in case of a medical legal case. And in Karnataka, we are blessed that we can do the PM inside the uh, donor hospital. So when we are intimating the police, we will be saying that uh, the retrieval time is that at this particular timing. And uh, that is the timing that we are expecting the accident uh, site police people to come for the PM. So uh, just for um, understanding that no one thing, any hospital licensed for a transplant of any single organs can retrieve all organs. But transplant to be done only at those particular licensed centers. If you have one license, you can retrieve everything. But you can't transplant, OK? But wherever that, that particular organ license is there, you can transplant it. This also you need to understand as a uh, uh, retrieval surgeon. And the next thing is like, you know, we have to think about uh, what is the logistics that you are going to use. Uh, it is a challenge and cross-clamping time is a challenge. If 
there is flight uh, or you know domestic flight or chartered flight uh, schedule is there so um, you i mean uh, retrieval surgeons have to say that uh, this is your flight timing and everything to the jsk coordinators well in advance so that uh, they can help you out with the green corridor and if there is airport uh, authorities are involved we have to inform well in advance uh, so that they make uh, the you know green channel inside the airport also then uh, the last thing is the post mortem and uh, we have to give the uh, body back to the uh, family members this is just a flow chart information of the donation process uh, so what all things that you know have covered information to the the first thing that you know uh, we will be informing to the uh, organ advisors uh, there is availability of the potential donor and uh, the clinical details and what we do the next thing is like alert to the groups why uh, email or sms to the different groups we have a heart lungs kidney liver sender uh, group and the transplant coordinators group so we will be sending all this information to the group then information to the ttk blood bank for sample collection circulation of donor data form with clinical details then we will be doing the uh, offers or, or, uh, organ offer the tentative of organ offer uh, offer to the in house donor uh, and just in case if a donor is from a ntorc center first or organ offer is always to the emergency listed patient if the emergency listed patient is not there the next chance is for the multi organ multi organ is not there means the next is single rota single rota is we in karnataka what we follow is alphabetical order of the hospital and uh, this is what uh, we do it in karnataka and this is what uh, i wanted to focus more what the coordinators are expecting from the retrieval surgeon one thing is like meet the time expectation of the donor family in handing over the body i told you in the beginning itself that you know, we work in a reverse order where in which we put target of you know when we want the body to be given back to the family members so meet the time expectation of the donor family in handing of the uh, handing over of the uh, uh, body next one is retrieval team should maintain healthy conversation with the donor management team why i put this uh, point over here is i have seen that uh, uh, when some uh, team retrieval team wanted to adjust uh, any kind of you know um, uh, the fluid or uh, or any kind of you know ventilator settings or anything so you need to check with the intensivist team over there you can't just like that because you know here in karnataka what we do is we permit that retrieval team to come and assess the donor one one team can assess the donor and when you assess it if you want to change any ventilator setting or something don't touch uh, without informing the uh, donor hospital intensivist team it is not going to be healthy because we have seen that it disputes so that is one thing that i wanted to tell that the retrieval team should maintain a <coughs> healthy conversation with the donor management team organ screening by other hospital is permitted one time and the reports to be shared in the general in general why because every time we can't permit every uh, potential um, retrieval center to come and do the uh, assessment again and again always aim at the optimal usage of organs and why i am saying this one is like when a sender is having a <coughs> heart lung and kidney license and they don't have a liver okay and the liver sender have to come from a very long distance and uh, uh, you have some sort of you know um, uh, difficulty in managing the donor family and stuff like that the donor hospital anyway they are getting their own um, licensed organ so they rush so but try and see when you are counseling the donor family try and see for the optimal usage of organs so and um, always uh, um, it is the you know uh, retrieval surgeons have to um, uh, pay attention for the optimal usage of organs um, wait 
and another thing is that every state has a different organ allocation policy so uh, i have seen that you know people who has practiced in some other state is coming to our state and then they uh, um, force us to say that you know this is not the practice that you know we have done in our state you have to do it in this way no uh, it is like you know organ allocation policy is different in different state another thing is that organ acceptance or declining status have to confirm within 45 minutes because you know every time that when we are offering this organ to somebody what happens is like every hospital is taking one hour two hour three hour means the we can't give the body back to the family members in the promised time so uh, always say that whether you are going to take it or uh, you are not going to take it in 45 minutes time next thing is cross climbing time to be tentatively <coughs> cross climbing time to be tentatively worked up before the retrieval in case of organ sharing out of station to match with the flight charter and in house patient arrival another thing is always have your backup patient ready because you never know you never know whether your uh, recipient is going to you know develop a fever or a high bp or something like that in the last minute so always you have to have your backup patient ready and any concerns during the retrieval transplant has to be addressed to the specific organ advisory committee through jsk team this is what the healthy uh, things that we do it in here so um, um, is this retrieval going to be uh, very smooth no we are going to face challenges challenges means so many challenges but how we can overcome all these things it is a team effort of all this um, you know family icu transplant team police media religious re leaders social workers and government ultimately this is a teamwork so we are all uh, instrument in gifting the life to somebody and then make somebody's life shine thank you any question bit about your organization jeevan sadhika we are not aware of that because we are not sorry 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 jeevan sadhika the background of jeevan sadhika so jeevan sadhika is the nodal agency here in karnataka we are it's just uh, it is uh, we now that you know it, it is registered as a society and uh, we are the one who is maintaining all that uh, pledges we have two kind of waiting list where in which you know donor pledges are there another one is the waiting list of the recipient who is waiting for different organs so uh, and whenever there is a uh, donation happens this potential donor is identified that time uh, we will be the one who is going to the donor hospital and getting the uh, written consent and the allocation of the organs also we are taking care of it so maintaining the registry allocation of the organs and uh, those are the main things Uh, I just wanted to congratulate JSK again. Not only is it the rock rock group and huge donations, and clearly, Lija, you're the Lady Gaga driving this thing, and it's phenomenal to see. I just had a couple of questions. Um, one thing I'd like to um, dispel is the myth that retrieval uh, teams need to go to the donor to then decide on a match. Absolutely wrong. They should never go. If the matching is already done by virtue of the basic metrics provided by uh, Lidja's outfit. So it should never happen that you go there and say, oh, it doesn't match anymore. It, the function may not be viable. The function, you may turn it down or pass it on. But you cannot say that it doesn't match my recipient. You've wasted the opportunity for another unit to come and transplant. Now, you mentioned that the different agencies have different policies and so on. Is there no way we can try to get to some sort of standardized policies and protocols, given it's not rocket science, it's all written? Uh, and finally, uh, one comment, please, on the ability of people to manage these patients in different hospitals varies enormously. To one or two places which are fantastic, they stick to the books. For us in heart and lung, it is desperately important because fluid kills the lungs, inert vasopressors kills the heart, and yet many patients have got central lines that are not transduced. So why isn't it being transduced? Um, and why can't we get central lines in to manage these patients properly? Sir, so I really can't uh, answer that question, but honestly, that you, uh, all the retrieval centers, when if you have any requirement, 
please place that uh, requirement with the donor hospital intensivist team when you are coming to the hospital please don't uh, i have seen that i have seen in my career that you know there are a lot of dispute where in which you know we have literally uh, you know uh, have to say that you know, sir, uh, if this is the case that you know, we will not be able to allocate the organs to you that much uh, rudely that you know, we have to uh, you know tell them so please place your uh, request with the intensivist team and inten intensivist and then we do have a um, uh, you know uh, donor management team also by um, uh, the by by order government order that you know, we have a branded certification team where in which you know we have three people identified and who, who can actually manage the donor they don't have to come to the donor hospital but over the phone call that you know they will uh, help the intensivist uh, of that particular hospital to ma manage and maintain the donor so that way uh, yeah i mean just to follow up on that um, uh, the, the your second point first because as you correctly say donations are happening in smaller cities smaller hospitals and uh, it may be the only donation that year in that particular hospital so the intensivist may not know how to manage that in Karnataka, we have solved that problem by having a management committee, a donor management sort of advisory board, which has got intensivists who are trained in this. As you correctly said, there are SOPs. There are SOPs that are then shared with the government hospital. They are I mean, they're available on the web, but we have them in the state as well. Uh, and uh, they, they can run based on which organs are being utilized. Uh, so a couple of things here, communication, that's the biggest thing that we've heard today. Communicate, you know, coordinators communicate to you about a patient, we have a standardized form of communication about donor forms, you know, when, when a, what donor details are required. So based on that, most of us should be able to make an educated decision on whether we are using the organ or not. Okay. So communicate that to the coordinators in an appropriate time. Communicate with the treating hospital or the doctors and in a, in a civil way, you know, because, you know, that's, that's, the, that's sort of the part that usually is lacking, you know, because ultimately you have to talk to people, talk to colleagues who may not ha be doing this every day, you know. So this is something that we have to do uh, well. And more importantly, teams have to communicate with each other because that is something that's happening more and more. You know, you have heart teams, lung teams, pancreas teams coming together. Uh, and uh, each one is obviously, you know, focused and driven. And so basically what I tell everybody is keep your elbows in, right? Just talk to each other, work with each other because we are all responsible for making sure that as many organs can be used as possible. This may mean uh, delaying a start time because a team is getting in late. This may mean whatever, whatever is based on the wishes of the family. But we have to work with each other. So that because it's not just I'm responsible for the liver and the liver is used and the rest of it is not my problem. It's not that way. We are all responsible to making sure that as many organs can be used as possible. Okay. So a big round of applause for Deajit <laughs> for making all this work. In our center, uh, we are licensed for the kidney transplant and uh, we have started recently doing that. Now we are planning for uh, deceased donor also. We don't have infrastructure right now for retrieval of uh, heart, lung and uh, the liver. So if we go in for a retrieval, can we just take the kidneys and leave the other organs and would, you, uh, would, would we face any questions from... No, uh, I mean, uh, you, you don't need a lot of uh, infrastructure for retrieving organs. Most uh, organ retrievals are done in relatively small hospitals. Yeah, we don't have the experts to kind of take so basically what happens, the way it's supposed to work is that once you say you have a donor in Jammu, right? Yes. You say that the donor has agreed to donate liver, kidney, pancreas, heart and lung. Yes, so it goes to your SOTO. SOTO says, okay, fine, we accept the kidneys, but don't accept the other organs. Then it goes to your ROTO. ROTO says we accept liver, but you don't accept heart and lungs. Then it goes to NOTO, and it is nationally allocated. Okay. Now the team in the, it may be picked up by a team in Chennai, for example. Okay or in Hyderabad, right? Okay. Or in or in Bangalore. Yeah. So now the team in Bangalore says, well, we accept this. Now it is their responsibility to get there and retrieve the organs. Okay? okay? So that's, that's how the system is designed. You have to calculate it before yes. The and I mean, the, the point that she was making was very, very well made, you know? Yes. No, no, you can, you can retrieve, you can retrieve any organ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you can do, you have to share, you have to share it, but, but, yeah, but the important thing is to communicate these to, th to the coordinators in time so that they can escalate it to the rotor sort of not a fast. Otherwise, we don't lose time. So what I want to know was that if uh, somebody does not circulate, uh, are you liable for any prosecu prosecution? Like? <laughs> 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 
I if I just go and take it, you know, I just left actually. I I I want my kidney stone so somebody has to come from Chennai. Maybe by the time the donor will start, I think. Yes, sir, that is the reason that you know, we, we, we start working from uh, what is the time that the we need to give the f uh, body back to the family members. From there, we are working backward. Is there a legal implication no. if he doesn't get it from the other level? No. So, so there's only one hard line here. What time does the fashion patient's family want the body back? Yes. Okay, that's the that's the only hard line that we have because if the patient family, you can negotiate with them. They might say that we, we can request them, and you know whatever is in our in our sort of uh, means to do so. But if the patient's family wants the body back by one, then it's one o'clock. So that's sort of the that is the basic thing that we followed in Karnataka. And if we are able to retrieve organs within that time, then we do that. Uh, unfortunately, if the patient's family doesn't agree. They say that we have a long way to travel. Then you know there isn't much you can do about that. You want to say that? Just one thing on that very yeah. issue, because that's first on your list yeah. is to keep time with the family's wishes. Yes. Yeah. And yet elsewhere, that is not at the top of the list, because the point is in counseling to leverage their altruistic wish to donate and therefore convert as many organs as possible to transplantation. And in the context here of an uh, of offer occurring immediately after brain stem death testing, you are still in this brain stem death phase where some of the organs are not going to be at their best. So is there mileage, Lija, in the counseling to buy more time to say, listen, you don't have, you're not having to worry about money. This is all being taken care of but your wish to try and give as many organs as possible might take an extra day or two because we want to place all the organs for transplantation. So do you think there is uh, somehow we can get to making this family directive a little bit more flexible, which I find out from, I mean, I realize from the Spanish model that the counseling is very much at the core of gaining that flexibility. Sir, it's very easy to ask this question because I have done counseling with the donor family. I know that what they have they are undergoing, and we are approaching the family members when at, at their uh, most difficult time. It is good that you know they are even considering uh, organ donation as an option. They are considering, and plus or minus one or two hours that you know, we might, uh, you know, uh, get it from the family members, but not more than that. We can't ask for a day or two or something like that. Maximum is like you know one plus, plus or minus two hours. That's it. The, from my experience that I'm telling. Hello. Uh, quick question. So, in the forms, consent forms, you mentioned the various organs that were going to be retrieved and consented by the family. So. The liver and the kidney and the pancreas teams always retrieve the blood vessels along with the organs concerned, because they are required for reconstruction. Do you mention blood vessels in the form? No, we don't. Is it essential, sir? Uh, I mean, ideally you should, but actually technically it, is, it gets covered in the tissue and it's used for, I mean, the purported use is to actually facilitate the transplant of the organs. Yeah. So that's how we get around that. But um, I mean, uh, in the sort of normal scheme of things, you should mention that, really. So because most of the time when we go, they say that the form has already been uploaded onto the, uh, the government website. So now yeah. we can't add it. Yeah. So but we say the same thing because it is part of the same organ retrieval. So we retrieve Correct. the blood vessels. So, so it, it's it it's important to facilitate that organs implant. No. So exactly. for so for that purpose, I think it shouldn't it shouldn't be a big problem. Yeshwant. Hi, sir. So one more just point to be added uh, in consenting process. Uh, what I mean back in UK when uh, we wanted to uh, retrieve. They, for every additional incision made on uh, on the donor, we need to take consent. Like uh, uh, putting a cruciate incision or putting a uh, say uh, uh, midline incision. So, is there anything like that in our uh, uh, Indian this thing that we can extend our incision or we can oh, say modify our approach? No, no, no. I mean, you going into the groin or clamping for the. There is no, there is no such thing. I mean, there have been certain specific requests we've had. Uh, in Canada, for example, uh, in a burial, somebody wanted them to be buried in a dress that sort of revealed the neck. So they wanted, they had requested us not to make a thoracic incision. Uh, and uh, we respected that. But those are usually individual family decisions. Uh, we do not ask for a specific consent in India. It should be in your protocol. 
tips. Yes. Just a quick question. So you keep mentioning that the primary factor which decides retrieval is the time at which we need to give the body back to the patient. So is there a provision wherein you go ahead and retrieve the organs anyway, even though your allotment is still pending? Is that an option or is there a precedent for that which has happened before? In the sense that you retrieve it and then you worry about the location. Is that something that is possible? The, from the time that you know, we have the first alert comes, we have six servers. So all the tem temporary allocation that you know, we have been done already. Just that uh, since transplant is a activity where in which small, small activities are involved, and then we can't predict what is going to happen the next time. Uh, suppose in you know, the, the uh, day before yesterday, we had a donor. Uh, everything was fine, and then uh, liver was uh, on, on. You know, in the last minute, the recipient developed a fever, and then uh, we couldn't take it for that particular one. So then, that actually cost us uh, another uh, one hour or two hour more. So this happens. That is the reason that we always said, but then the transplant coordinator never say uh, the correct timing to the retrieval surgeon. When we say that 10 o'clock, <laughs> remember that we That's have smart. <laughs> <laughs> we have two hours in our hand, so that we actually match up. <laughs> so that's that's smart. That's smart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, forget it here or later. <laughs> when you leave this uh, this room, you should forget yeah, this. <laughs> because you know that, that is what you know. Where we start from, where the donor family, when the donor family wants the body back, we should work backward, and at the same time, we should uh, aim at the optimal usage of organs too. Dr. Suhas, you are very futuristic. I appreciate. Tomorrow we are going to get a stage where, going by the trend, we may have to retrieve the organ and wait for them to tell, OK, where it is to be given. That stage is going to come. Uh, so it I will not. your <laughs> futuristic point. Uh, it's a very good point, actually. And I'll tell you why. Because if we go to a point where there are retrieval teams for organs, and in fact, there are many surgeons in the US, for example, that do nothing but just retrieve organs, specifically for units or an OPO. We're getting to the point where soon, in the, within the next five years, just about every single donated organ is going to be put into a machine. So we are going to get to a point where one or two centers, because of the costs and the expertise required, will, will become the, the regional retrieval center that banks, stores, organs on machines and then with the time in hand allocates them appropriately to anywhere in the country. So I see that actually happening. Uh, see the futuristic step government has already taken where they have given the, the non-transplant retrieval license to 17 centers in the state which itself says that tomorrow a stage may come there can be 17 donations in one day itself. All center can have one yeah. organ. So you have a point, sir, that yes, a stage would come. So ask Dr. Soas, you are very futuristic. We will have to have more think beyond this what we are doing. Thank I you. Mean, I think part of the mandate of why this program also started was to develop a retrieval cadre, you know, of surgeons who can retrieve. If, for example, we are stuck and you know we need to retrieve, if we're not able to travel to Belgaum or Hubli in a timely fashion, if there are surgeons available who have the skills and expertise to retrieve, an organ is not wasted, and that is certainly part of why we've been doing this for the last six, seven years, uh, you know, and hopefully we move towards that as well. So the, another point uh, for Lija Mol, what she says, the uh, the uh, relatives the, regarding the time. Now, there is uh, some talk about uh, the conducting two uh, apnea tests. Like, why do you do the second one? There is some controversy regarding that. No, no, there, there is no setting. controversy. There's no, there's no controversy. So whether we should do the second one? Uh, no, this is, this is the law. What? This, is, this is laid down in our constitution. No, no, it so is a law. But now people yeah. are telling whether really it is required, the second one. If the yeah. one, first one is uh, showing, the yeah. hardly anybody, you will see that second one, anybody has become 
you know suddenly no, no, not no. brain dead so th that's so right uh, i mean there has uh, there has not been even one incidence proved like that so this is a arbitrary kind of uh, time which has been given and there are question i attended a conference in pgi recently they were just uh, thinking about kind of uh, getting around or i mean making changes in the law mm. that the second one is it mandatory or not no i mean i think that uh, that is a separate discussion actually about uh, you know uh, this is but for the purpose of this workshop we need to know what is the law right now so that we don't go to jail right so that's like a, uh, the the two two sets of brain stem deaths six hours apart by people who are not involved with transplantation there have to be four doctors one is uh, intensive treating the uh, the son and one is the head of the hospital that's actually uh, you know uh, the yeah science documents so those are those are those are the critical parts i mean you you're right and there are certain special circumstances pediatrics and so on and so forth we'll not get into that right now regarding allocation very quickly we actually have uh, dr metu srinivas reddy with us here who's the head of uh, liver uh, transplantation at global he's actually designed the national liver allocation policy and uh, we are moving towards more standardized allocation across the country hopefully that will be taken by professional bodies rather than by uh, by you know sort of uh, national and state level bodies uh, hopefully we can talk about that a little later